on and celebrate His gift of love we will celebrate The Son of God who loved us And gave us life We'll shout your praise, O Lord You give us joy nothing else can bring We'll give to you our offering Celebration praise Come on and celebrate Celebrate, celebrate and sing Celebrate and sing to the Lord Come on and celebrate Celebrate, celebrate and sing Celebrate and sing to the Lord Lift up your voice to praise The name above every other name Jesus the Christ who saved us From sin and death Let's stand our knees to Him Our tongue confess that He's Lord indeed Let's give to Him our offering In celebration praise Come on and celebrate Celebrate, celebrate and sing Celebrate and sing to the Lord. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, celebrate and sing. Celebrate and sing to the Lord. Good evening to one and all and welcome to this evening's Mass for the inauguration of the Ignatian year. As most of you already know, the idea of the Ignatian year has come from our Jesuit Superior General, Father Arturo Sosa. The year begins on the 20th of May, 2021, today, and goes on till the 31st of July, 2022. Perhaps you have also heard that the date 20th of May, which at first sight seems like an odd date, is the day that Inigo de Loyola, a soldier and knight in the Spanish ranks, was wounded by a cannonball shot by a French gunman. I shall not belabor this point, as most of you will be knowing this part of the story of his injury and subsequent convalescence. Fast forward to the point when Inigo, now Ignatius, became an ardent disciple of Jesus and of the saints and ultimately ended up being the founder of the Society of Jesus and a saint himself. Now, Father Sosa, the general, wants to use this momentous event of the 20th of May, 1521, as a marker to bring about the reconversion of Jesuits the world over, and also all their collaborators. The occasion is appropriately chosen because now in 2021, it is exactly 500 years since the wounding of Ignatius at the Battle of Pamplona. Across the world, the approximately 16,000 Jesuits will be celebrating this occasion in a spiritual way on this precise day. The Pune Jesuit province, like all the other provinces, will be having various programs right through this Ignatian year to keep on revitalizing ourselves and all our collaborators, whether in schools, parishes or any other ministry. We shall make it a point to communicate to you 
all the activities and programs we have planned. The Ignition Year Core Committee is very happy to have with us this evening Father Agnello Mascarenius, our provincial, who has consented to preside over today's Eucharist. Father Agnello is a man of vast experience. He has been assistant to the Goa Provincial years ago. From there, he was called to Rome to serve as an assistant to the Indian Secretariat to Father General. He brings to our province a rich knowledge of the Society of Jesus and of its core fundamentals. And I am sure he will guide us well today as he develops the theme of the need for a new conversion during this Ignatian year. Welcome, Father Agnello. Welcome also to Father Stan Fernandez, his assistant, and to all the concelebrants, and to all of you participating in this Eucharist. Some have worked hard to prepare this beautiful liturgy for us. Let us all try to get fully involved in the Mass so that we may all benefit thereby. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The theme of the Ignatian year is to see all things new in Christ. I therefore invite you my dear brother Jesuits, along with our larger Ignatian family, which includes all our collaborators, benefactors, relations, friends, and well-wishers, to join St. Ignatius as fellow pilgrims in, this, in the process of renewal to see ourselves, our mission, and our collaboration through the eyes of Christ. I also request you to pray for vocations, to carry forward the ministry God has initiated through St. Ignatius and his companions. Thank you for joining us in this celebration. As I offer this Eucharist, I pray for each one of you, your families, especially those suffering due to COVID-19 pandemic and those who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist in a worthy manner, let us call to mind the areas of our life mission which require renewal and implore God's guidance and mercy. Lord, you desire that each one of us strive always to love and serve you in everything we do. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You invite us to fulfill our mission in and through the communities we belong. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. In our institutions, you challenge us to collaborate with all peoples of goodwill to cater to those pushed 
to the margins of our society. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. To God in the highest And on earth peace to The people of Buddha We praise you, we bless you We adore you, we glorify you We give you thanks for your great glory Lord, Lord, heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord the Lamb of the Son of the Father, we take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. We take away the sins of the world to see our prayer. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your name, grant that by his help we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Oh, taste and see 
post in the Lord our God Let the humble hear and be glad Taste and see How good our God can be Oh, taste and see The second reading, do everything for the glory of God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, so that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Kindly rise and join in for the gospel. The Lord be with you and with and your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory be to you, O Lord. Lord. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost? to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out 
to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while the, the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, 500 years ago, on this very day, Ignatius was wounded as he valiantly rallied his troops to guide the fortress at Pamplona against the French troops. He was struck down by a cannonball that shattered his right leg and wounded the left. This traumatic experience also shattered his worldly dreams and ambitions. However, his spirit was not crushed. Providentially, God worked in his life during his long convalescence at the castle of Loyola. Notwithstanding his deformity, he embarked on a pilgrim path that transformed him and his worldly ambitions. During this Ignatian year, all of us are invited to join him as co-pilgrims towards personal, communitarian and institutional conversion. It is true that he began a long journey from Loyola, Spain after his initial conversion. However, during this pilgrimage, both outward and inward, which lasted for about 34 years, he gradually realized that the process of conversion that began in Loyola had to be deepened and purified along the way. Therefore, the process of his conversion was not just at Loyola, but it occurred in different places, and often these moments were difficult moments for him. In short, he struggled with his process of conversion, and it took him a good bit of time and energy. Today, my dear friends, he invites us and is willing to accompany us as we struggle with our own conversion and spiritual progress. Change or renewal normally does not happen instantly. It is gradual and a lot of effort is required in order to deepen and complete our process of conversion. As we have heard in today's Gospel, Ignatius too had to carry his cross and follow Christ in order to be his disciple. His pilgrimage and his struggles can help us understand our own life's journey and serve us as an inspiration as we pick up our cross daily in order to be worthy disciples of Christ. Let us then look at some of the significant moments of his process of conversion, which we come across 
in his autobiography. After he recovers from the severe leg injury which he had sustained at Pamplona, he set out on a long pilgrimage from Loyola to Barcelona with a firm desire to travel to Jerusalem. And one day during this pilgrimage, he encounters a person who did not agree with his own views regarding Mother Mary. This situation upset Ignatius very much and all his arguments were not enough to convince the stranger. He was filled with anger because he could not defend Mary's honor. Well, one could ask, was he really defending Mother Mary's honor or his own? Here is Ignatius, who had spent months in prayer and reflection, and now is unable to handle his anger, or probably the dent in his ego. He is providentially prevented from attacking and harming his fellow traveler at the last minute. This encounter helps him to realize that he still has to grow and become more tolerant towards others. At the shrine of Our Lady of Montserrat, he spends a whole night in vigil and surrenders his sword, a symbol of violence and hostility. It is a process of further purification from anger and intolerance. In his autobiography, he talks about this encounter and humbly mentions how God dealt with his soul which was still blind and lacked discretion. There was still some self-centeredness in him. This was also seen in his attitude towards penance. If other saints have done so much, I can do even more. This is how he motivated himself. Unconsciously, the focus was on himself. He still had to move from self to God. In Manresa, when he spent about 10 months, this process of deepening the initial conversion continues. He tries to be in control. He does a lot of penance and fasting, lives on arms, keeps going for confessions, but is tormented by scruples. Although he had carefully made his general confession, he continued having scruples. Scruples kept coming back in spite of repeated confessions. He prayed for seven hours on his knees, even getting up regularly at midnight. He fasted, continued with severe penances, but in none of them did he find any cure for his scruples. And this continued for some months. This difficulty even brought him on the verge of committing suicide. So desperate was he to get rid of these scruples. During these struggles, it slowly dawns on him that while he went about fulfilling his spiritual duties, he was the center of his attention and not God. He was idealizing to be the best saint, one who could receive God's favor through his own efforts. God was not yet the center of his life. What was lacking in him was his total surrender, a total dependence on God. This surrender 
begins to take place when in his great distress he cries out to God saying, and I quote, Help me, Lord, for I find no remedy in men nor in any creature. Yet, if I thought I could find it, no labor would be too hard for me. Yourself, Lord, show me where I may find it. Even though I should have to chase after a puppy, that it may give me the remedy, I will do it." Unquote. And in this desperation, he surrenders totally to God and allows God to guide him. He is no longer in control, and the Lord takes over. This surrender liberates him from his scruples. He experiences a mystical eruption. This happens when we surrender completely and allow God to work in us, it happens when we integrate our efforts with those of God who is at work in us. In other words, to allow God to teach us like mere children, as was the experience of Ignatius. This process of ongoing conversion also teaches him that it is more important to seek God's will rather than insist on doing what one greatly desires for God. This realization comes to him in Jerusalem. He wanted to stay on in Jerusalem even if it meant death and continue his ministry there. However, he realizes that it was more important to fulfill God's will which is manifested through legitimate superiors, and therefore he returns to Venice and finds his own Jerusalem later on in Rome. Well, one could cite more examples, but I have picked this up to show how a truly great saint like Ignatius struggled with his conversion until he too, like St. Paul could say, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Yes, we all desire conversion, but genuine conversion happens when we surrender ourselves completely over to God like Mary, our mother, and allow God's will to be fulfilled perfectly in our lives. This is an ongoing process. As we remember the conversion of St. Ignatius during this year, let us renew our resolve to work consistently and sincerely towards our own conversion. Let us therefore pray that as St. Ignatius Continue to walk with us as we humbly allow God to carry forward the process of conversion that he has begun in each one of us, in our communities, and in our institutions. Amen. Now I return it 
to be governed by your will, just say your word to me, at once I will obey. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May these offerings we make to you as we celebrate St. Ignatius be pleasing, Lord God, and grant that the sacred mysteries which you have made the fount of all holiness may sanctify us too in the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you summon us to imitate the discipline of Saint Ignatius, that we may hear the voice of the Spirit with docile and trusting hearts. And you move us to conform our life to Christ, that we might imitate him, the model of every virtue. Through him, O Father of mercy, we are preordained by you that by responding to your gifts, we may complete the journey of faith, be sustained by the support of hope, be refreshed by the strength of love. Therefore now and for all ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts 
we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Therefore O Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body one spirit in christ may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed virgin mary mother of god blessed joseph her spouse the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs saint ignatius of loyola and saint francis xavier with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help may this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray o lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant francis our pope and thomas our bishop the order of bishops all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion o merciful father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through christ our lord through whom you bestow on the world 
all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. With total trust and confidence in God, our loving Father, let us now pray the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is, it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, we as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, Lord, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with and your Lord, spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacrifice of praise that we have offered with thanksgiving in honor of Saint Ignatius, O Lord, bring us to exalt your majesty without end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Kindly bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who created you to praise, reverence, and serve Him by loving Him above all things and all things in Him, sustain you by the particular grace to be faithful in your calling. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who desired your, our Holy Father Ignatius, to serve him under the banner of the cross, call you to follow him, and make you faithful servants of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who inspired St. Ignatius and his companions to serve the church, even to the farthest ends of the earth, lead you to the reward promised to faithful laborers of the gospel. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in all things. Thanks be to God. In the way of the man who still the waters, called to walk in the way of the man who calmed the sea, called to live in the world to be free to live for others, called to walk in the way of the man from Galilee. That's the word that we say for all God's children. Hear the word, that's the word that we say for you and me. It's the word of a life we are called to give to others. It's the word that will give them their possibility. Walking in the way of the man who still the waters, called to walk in the way of the man who calmed the sea.
home to live in the world to be free to live for others called to walk in the way of the man from Galilee as a member of the Ignatian year team I'm happy to give this vote of thanks at the end of this evening's Eucharistic Liturgy. In the first place, I thank our provincial, Father Agnello Mascarenus, for so kindly consenting to preside over the Eucharist despite his heavy schedule. Thanks, Father Agnello, for the inspiring and motivating sermon you gave us while developing the readings from Scripture. We shall surely try to follow your advice. We also thank Father Stan Fernandez, assistant to Father Agnello, and all the concelebrants for their kind presence here this evening, and for praying for us that we might celebrate this year of St. Ignatius profitably. Thanks next to all those who helped in some way to ensure that this Mass liturgy could proceed smoothly. I thank Father Joe de Souza, parish priest, and his assistant, Father Anthony, for making the church with all its facilities available. Thanks to the wonderful choirs, we had three of them, which helped us so much to raise our minds to God in such a beautiful way. I thank Miss Caroline Menezes and her sister Nikita, both of whom also helped to put all the pieces of this Mass together. Two hymns were sung by the SSU Choir, coordinated by Prasad Pandit and his wife Candy. And finally, the communion hymn was sent to us by Joe Cordo and Celeste. Credit for the Ignatian of Lo Ignatius of Loyola anthem was given at the end of the rendition. rendition. It was sung by St. Mary's School from Mumbai. We thank Mac Baptista for the floral and altar setup and Mr. Prakash for the videography. We cannot forget to thank all the Ignatian Year Corps committee members for all their inputs. And finally, thanks to all who are participating in this Eucharistic liturgy, albeit from your homes, thanks to the pandemic. We th encourage you to keep using the videos and other materials we may send you from time to time so that we may all continue to be inspired by the conversion and the life of St. Ignatius of Loyola. God bless you all. At the conclusion of this Mass, we will have, finally, the Ignatian Anthem, which will be sung on video following shortly. We are delighted to present to you our very own lockdown version of the March of St. Ignatius. This hymn has been done by both St. Mary's ICSE as well as SSC. We hope you enjoy it. And may St. Ignatius of Loyola bless you as you work for the greater glory of God. Noble Knight, leader of the great array, lead us on, oh lead us on, we will fight, need thy sway, need thy sway. What the foes gather near, we don't fear, we don't fear. We'll not shun, we'll not quit, this is our noble career. We will fight ever true to death to thee, true to God, to faith and thee, true to thee. Lead us on gallantly, ever on valiantly, 
Need the banner to fight for the church and its rights. All for God's own greater glory is our cry. Battle cry. Not for gain nor in vain is our strife in this life, but for God who is our King, all our hearts to Him we bring. Growing stronger and stronger, let's fight and last longer and purer and purer to make heaven surer with crosses and trials and many denials we stop. But to die true, loyal to our King who reigns on high, He patiently leads us on.